Hi, it's Myrek from Charge Now, and in today's news time, we are going to talk about the Model S and Model X refresh. It's all visual, so I've decided to omit the video feed of me. Don't worry, still looking handsome as always. Oh man, booyah! It's here. After the market closed on Wednesday, January 27th, Tesla released their Q4 and whole year 2020 update. It's worthwhile to check it out since it's very well done and provides key insight into what's going on with the company. I will link the presentation file below. I'll also make a video about the financials provided in this update, but I need to fully digest it first write down some key points and metrics and in the end provide my observations and opinion. Okay, so one of the interesting aspects of this letter, or better said a presentation, was a vehicle refresh. Yes, Tesla finally dropped the bomb in form of a Model S and Model X refresh. The minute I saw this, I got super excited because I mean, look at it, it's simply stunning and next level. This has been a long rumored and evaded refresh. I can remember it dating back to 2018. This is one of the articles from that year stating interior refresh is coming in 2019 and full refresh in 2021. Once 2019 passed, with no refresh in sight, this actually became a running joke in the Tesla community. About a year ago, Elon sent back this and said there won't be a refresh anytime soon. Technically, he wasn't lying because it took some time. Um, today, it's here and it's a gorgeous one. When we check hypercharts, we can see that Model S and X achieved less and less sales from 2018 to 2020. It's obvious that these sales were cannibalized by Model 3 and Model Y sales and it's actually a healthy thing. On the other hand, I think people expecting a refresh were holding off their purchase and it's possible that that's why Elon tried to send back the refresh rumors. You know, it's similar but much smaller than the threat that legacy auto faces. They can't really hype EVs because that would effectively kill their ICE vehicle sales and they can't make enough EVs affordable EVs and make them profitable to fill the gap. This is sort of a loop they are currently in. Before we dive into refresh itself, there's one thing Elon said during the conference call and it got me even more excited. He said there's lots of cool stuff to talk about in regards to the refresh, but it's for whole another call. This means there's more exciting stuff we don't know about yet. Additionally, Alternate Jones said on Twitter, received a call from my Tesla service advisor. The new 2021 Model X will be delivered to me sometime in April and people like me who have had prior orders will get a $2,000 price reduction. He also mentioned that there are 12 new features that Elon will announce shortly. Since the beginning of my history with Tesla, I fell in love with the Model S. Then the Model 3 came around and I wasn't really sure about the design, seeing it during its first reveal. It grew on me very quickly though, and nowadays I intend to get a Model 3. Although, after seeing this new, refreshed Model S, it's like seeing your ex and all those old feelings are coming up again. Let's start with the exterior. This is the refreshed Model S and old Model S side by side from the outside as well as the Model X old and refreshed. Although the changes are slight on the outside of the car, I much prefer the refresh design. The lines are slightly more pronounced, which adds more or less more edge. Overall, this design is timeless, and even when you look at the first more or less with the old fascia, it stood the test of time and it still looks relevant. Most of the car designs I see are over-designed, which makes them cool for a year or two, and that's it. To actually achieve a timeless design is extremely hard. You have to resist a constant temptation to use design elements that try to scream, hey, look at me, I'm new. In my opinion, Franz and his team execute on their design vision very well. It has been established with the first Model S and it's present in each of Tesla's vehicles. Uh, well, yeah, almost. The Cybertruck is something else, at least on the outside. By all of this, I'm trying to say that design team deserves a praise. 
incredible work. Okay, so when we move from the front to the side, we can see Chrome Delete made its way to Model S and X as well. It's visible around the windows and on the door handles. First it was introduced with a Model Y and 3. Actually, I prefer it this way and it's cheaper to manufacture. You wouldn't believe how expensive adding a Chrome finish can be. Then on the back or the rear of the car, your attention is instantly drawn to these darker tail lights that first made it to Model Y. Chrome Delete also runs along the line between the lights. The rear liftgate is electronic and can open and close itself. What you also may notice, especially when looking at the car from the back, it's a tiny bit wider. This, in my opinion, has to do with a tri-motor version where you need a little more space to squeeze in the third motor. This change is also visible in the cargo space going up from 26 cubic feet to 28 cubic feet. Let's move to the inside of the car and see the interior in its full glory. This is where all the fun starts. First, there is a new 17 inch cinematic display, meaning it's in a horizontal position, no longer using its vertical positioning. This display is actually 2 inches bigger when compared to Model 3 and Model Y display. I think making it horizontal will help Tesla streamline the software user interface and make it united for all their vehicles. Tesla says with 2200 by 1300 resolution, ultra bright, true colors, exceptional responsiveness, and left right tilt, the new center display is the best screen to watch anywhere. For a comparison, Model 3 and Y display is 1920 by 1200 pixels. Left and right tilt is perfect for watching YouTube videos, Netflix and so on. For now you can do it when you charge your vehicle for example, but I think this shows that Tesla is serious about the full autonomy and this makes it perfect setup to watch movies or play games when car is driving itself once the full autonomy is reached. A second display in front of the driver shows critical driving information. And when we are talking about movies and games, let's add music to the mix. Well, sounds in general. There's a freaking 22 speaker audio. It's a 960 watt audio system that offers the best listening experience at home or on the road and new microphones enable active noise cancelling. To top it all up, in the visual and sound department, look at this cute third display for rear passengers. It has 8 inches and provides entertainment and controls. <laughs> That's what she said. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, uh, Tesla adds that up to 10 teraflops of processing power enables in-car gaming on par with today's newest consoles via Tesla Arcade. Wireless control compatibility allows gaming from any seat. Just for a comparison, PlayStation 5 has 10 teraflops of processing power and Xbox Series X is at 12 teraflops. Is Tesla going to compete against Xbox and PlayStation consoles? I can actually imagine sitting on the rear seat and playing games on this screen using wireless controller. Perhaps Tesla will release their own wireless controller as well? And when we are talking about the rear seats, look closely at the armrest in the middle. Can you see that? There are two spots for you to wirelessly charge your phone. The second row got its fair redesign and there's enough seating for three adults, of course when the armrest is up, with extra legroom. In the Model X you can configure up to seven seats. The crazy steering wheel design, in a good way, is probably the first thing you notice about the new interior. Tesla calls it a yoke steering and there's no stalks and no shifting. With a stalkless steering yoke you can enjoy both the best car to drive and the best car to be driven in. Okay, so imagine you want to back out of a parking spot on a parking lot. You don't have to manually shift the gear. Since the car can see around itself and recognize what's going on, it will automatically shift to reverse for you to back out. If you focus, you can see there are also touch controls for turn signals, windshield wipers, lights and others on the steering wheel when needed. This steering wheel design feels to me like a spaceship. When I think about it, most of the time when I drive, I actually touch the bottom part of the steering wheel anyway as to keep my hands rested but to be at full alert. Although in case of this steering wheel it might be even more natural and comfortable to keep them at the 3 and 9 o'clock positions with your fingers stretching around the top peaks um, or whatever are we going to call them. And yes it's a heated steering wheel as well. Another thing you can notice in the front is the new air vent design. It is very similar to Model 3 and Model Y air vent design. Actually I much prefer this over the 
traditional ones because this design can spread the airflow evenly. Tesla adds that airflow and temperature are controlled entirely through the displays without any physical vent. On hot days, cabin overheat protection ensures that the interior always stays cool and in cold weather, preconditioning automatically warms the cabin and prepares the battery for maximum range. When we are talking about heating and cooling, I should mention that the new interior includes heated seats for every passenger as well as heated windshield and side mirrors. As for those front seats, those can not only be heated but ventilated as well. Of course, it's not missing a HEPA air filtration system and Model S and X now finally have octavalve which massively helps with effectiveness in cold weather conditions. Maybe I'm just imagining something but do you see that beefy area in the middle there between the sun shades? It seems to have no storage box you can open so why is it that thick? Is there some additional sensors to it? This is the only image where we actually can see that area. All other, even the ones from up top, are actually missing it. I don't know, maybe it's nothing, but we will see. To top it all off, literally, there's a glass roof that gives passengers a brighter, more spacious experience and an abstracted views of the sky. Infrared and UV light is effectively blocked before entering the cabin, reducing heat and glare even when the sun is directly overhead. Here I want to point out that ultraviolet and infrared protection is not just applied to the glass roof but all the glass of the car. Model S, the first is dual motor long range for $80,000 that goes from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 3.1 second and has a range of 412 miles. I think they are sandbagging the range and it will increase a little. Second is the tri-motor plaid for $120,000 that goes from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 2 seconds and has a range of 390 miles. And the third that is actually a beast option, the tri motor plaid plus for 140,000 that's supposed to go from 0 to 60 in less than 2 seconds with a range of 520 miles and more. I think, as many others actually, the plaid plus model S will be the first to use 4680 cells. As Elon mentioned, pilot plant for these cells is already among the top 10 in the world measured by production capacity. Model X. Model X starts at 90,000 for dual motor long range with 0 to 60 in 3.8 seconds and 360 miles of range. Think about it for a second. It's a SUV that can go to 60 in 3.8 seconds. And it gets even better. Try motor plaid for $120,000 goes to 60 in 2.5 seconds and has a range of 340 miles. When I looked up the latest SUVs list by acceleration, look at what I found. Model X is a second faster than Dodge. Durango SRT Hellcat which starts at above $82,000 and has a combustion engine. Um, no thanks. Okay, this should be all. I don't know, I just love this update. To me, this interior looks much better than all of the luxury sedans out there produced by Legacy Auto. That pretty much wraps it up. Thank you very much for watching. Please, if you found this video interesting, hit the subscribe and thumbs up buttons. You are free to leave a comment or your suggestion and I will see you in the next video. Have a lovely day.